So, hello. Good morning sa inyo, mga fifth year peeps. So, this is going to be our first lecture video for our review classes. Now, ito na. Ito magiging takbo ng review class natin. So, di ba? As I have said sa chat, yung unang discussion natin or yung unang priority natin is matapos yung MAS. Bakit? Ulitin ko kasi yung MAS is the killer subject. So, ganun na gagawin natin. Now, para mas maging efficient tayo, para matapos natin agad. As I have said, last, uh, last school year, second semester, uh, halos lahat ng management topics nagawan ko ng lecture video. Kasi gaya na sabi ko, yun yung prioritize ko sa previous year. Kasi sa previous, yung mga graduate na sa previous year, management yun yung magiging killer subject nila. Kasi ulitin natin kasi yung BOA chairman, si Sir Quinanola, management yung kanyang, uh, MAS yung kanyang forte. So, <coughs> with that, mga dalawang PowerPoints lang or dal dalawang lecture videos lang ang gagawin ko ngayon for the management subject. And, ito na yung una. Then, yung next is yung next video. Then, i-add ko yung mga nagawa kong lecture videos from the previous batch para maging efficient ba tayo? Para tapos agad. But don't worry, hindi ibig sabihin na binigay ko agad quiz agad, no? I will give you 2 to 3 weeks to finish those videos. Kasi, as, <laughs> kasi, di ba? Ilang units lang tong ano natin, review subject. So, yeah. Kaya, bibigyan ko kayo ng time para panoorin yun sila. Now, take note, I am not constraining you na yung lecture videos ko lang yung papanoorin nyo. If you have the, ano, if you have the time, if you have the capacity, then also, watch other videos sa YouTube na, but ang importante kasi, ma-review nyo. Maalala nyo kung ano natutunan nyo. Yun yung mahalaga. So, kung gusto nyo dagdagan pa ng ibang lecture videos ang gusto nyo panoorin, go lang. Ang importante, may matuto kayo. Or, may maalala nyo kung ano yung tutunan nyo. Kasi nga, review subject lang to. So, yun, sabi natin. So, popos ko agad. After ko matapos tong two videos sa beginning, gawin ko silang playlist, post ko agad yung link. Doon nyo panoorin. YouTube rin para kontrolado nyo kung ano yung resolution para hindi kayo maubusan ng data. Lalo na sa mga limited lang yung data na meron. So, yun yung una. Yung second, ngayon it is very important, lalo na pag nagre-review kayo, to take notes, promise. Lalo na pag ano, the days coming to the board exam, hindi nyo na ano, mas, magiging sobrang mahalaga yung notes na gagawin nyo. So with that I want you uh, I will train you chart train talaga. Eh basta ang gagawin ko same sa ginawa ko sa last batch kung saan pinagawan ko sila ng quiz assignment and uh, pinagawa ko rin sa mga third years natin ngayon. Pinasulat ko sa kanila. At sa pinasulat, pinasolve ko sila ng mga problems tapos isusulat nila clearly sa yellow pad. Then since pandemic tayo ngayon, since online tayo ngayon, Ang gagawin nyo, ganun din. Bigyan ko kay assignment. Una, for the MAS. Then, yun, answerin nyo. Make sure na ganda, uh, ganda, sali gandahan. But make sure na kapag ibang tao yung kitingin ng papel nyo, maintindihan. O kapag ibang tao makakita ng papel nyo, maintindihan. Kasi pag hindi ko yung naintindihan, edi wala yung grades. Oo, let's say lang mga 10 or 15% yan ng, ano, ng final grade nyo. Ang ganun, mga ganun siguro. O oh, 10, 15, or 20% ang final grade nyo. So yun, bibigyan ko yun ng quizignment. And ang due date, since MAS pa lang yung quizignment na yun, is 2 to 3 weeks. Because after that 2 to 3 weeks, uh, long quiz tayo for MAS. So kasi ang magiging plano natin is before midterms, makatatlong subjects tayo. Siyempre, yung review lang gagawin natin. For the second quarter, tatlong subjects ulit. Kasi nga, tatlong subjects yung board exam natin. So with that, uh, after ng lecture video nito, after ko makonsolidate lahat ng videos na kailanganin, post ko agad ang quizignment para magawa nyo na. So with that, let's start. So yun, Management Advisory Services. Now, itong first lecture video, basically, introduction to, to MAS. And uh, as we have said, MAS is the killer subject for the batch because of the new BOA chairman. Now, sorry, class, if medyo matamla ako ngayon, sakit ng likod ko Masama yung gising ko. Masakit yung dito parte. Oh, hindi naman sa batok, pero yung lower, yung upper upper back ang sakit. So yun, nagkaka-headache ako, pero 
the show must con- the show must continue, di ba? Kailangan natin to matapos para hindi kayo dehado pagdating ng review niyo for the board exam. So ito, management advisory services, intro lang to. So baka medyo nakakantok to, eh. intro lang kasi to. Eh. Ito yung mga ito yung pinaka boring na part ng MAS, yung intro niya. <coughs> Now, MAS, definitions muna tayo. Management Advisory Services. Now, Management Advisory Services is a field of accounting work concerned daw with providing advice, kaya ng advisory, and technical assistance to help clients improve the use of their resources to achieve their goals. So, yan lang. Yan yung primary focus ng Management Advisory Services. It is a field of accounting. But instead of, gaya ng ginagawa sa FAR, mag-present ng financial statements dito, magbibigay ka ng information and technical assistance in order for you to provide proper advice o proper ano sa clients na kailangan ng improvement sa kanilang operations. Yun yung may primary purpose ng management advisory services. You are offering your service in order to help improve the operations of the client. Now, management consultancy, an independent and objective advisory service provided by qualified persons to clients in order to help them identify and analyze management problems or opportunities. So, similar ano eh, similar nature pagdating sa definition ng management advisory services, management consultancy. Pang the word is up, consultant. You nagpa-consult, parang di ba, nagpa-consult ka sa doktor para malaman mo kung anong problema meron ka. And para, pag alam na kung na-determine na kung ano yung problema, aayusin yung problema. Dito na, pinag-usapan ba dito yung problema sa management ng company. Pupunta ka sa isang professional, pupunta ka sa isang qualified person, usually mga firms to sila eh. Or minsan, hinahire mo for ano, maging part ng company mo para tulungan kayo sa decision making. So, pupunta nyo yan. Tanong mo. Pacheck nyo sa kanila anong problema. Nadetermine ng problema, tutulungan kanila. Consultancy, bibigyan kanila ng proper advice paano ayusin yung problema. Ngayon itong management consultancy, consultancy is being performed by a management consultant. This is a person qualified by education, experience, technical ability, and temperament to advise or assist businessmen on a professional basis in identifying, defining, and solving specific management problems involving the organization, planning, direction, control, and operation of the firm. Kaya nga tinatawag na eh, yung isang accountant, jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. Kasi kahit saan mo siyang field ipasok, alam niya kung ano yung gagawin niya. Kasi he was trained, he or she was trained to do that eh. Tingnan mo mga subjects niya, FAR. O yan, typical accounting subject yan. Auditing, yeah, sure. Typical accounting subject. Yeah, samahan mo ng taxation, samahan mo ng management advisory services. Meron ka pang law. Meron ka pang advanced fi- un- financial accounting reporting. So, ka- kahit saan mo ipasok yan, alam niya kung anong gagawin niya. And in that case, since meron tayong management advisory services and our primary focus ng ating undergrads ano, is financial accounting, accounting itself, so that you can provide, you can be a management consultant. Qualified ka. Accountant ka eh, CPA ka, your license. Ngayon, sabi ng Statement of Management Accounting, Institute ma, Statement on Management Accounting, Institute of Management Accountant, IMA, 2008, ito yung base sa kanila for them. This is the primary definition of management accounting. It is a profession that involves partnering in management decision making, devising plan and performance management systems, and providing expertise in financial reporting and control to assist management in the formulation and implementation of an organization's strategy. Ngayon, ito yung nature ng, ano, ng management accounting, decision-making system. Oh, tutulungan mo yung management eh. Hindi, ang management, hihingi ng tulong kapag may problema. O yun, pasok ka. Ngayon, Check nyo kung anong problema. Ito, nasabi natin ito kanina. After nyo ma-determine kung anong problema, ngayon, alamin nyo na kung ano yung magandang gawin para maayos yung problema niyan. Diyan na kayo mag-create ng decision-making system. Paano kayo mag-decide kung ano yung appropriate action para ayusin yung problema na meron yung management. Futuristic. Bakit? Kasi, ang ginagawa nyo, kasi di ba pagdating sa FAR, ang, anong ginagawa nyo? Yung previous yung historical data, pinipresent nyo. Yun yung ginagawa sa FAR eh. You're presenting the historical data. Pakita mo sa 
users. Pagdating dito sa ano, management accounting, ang focus nyo, yung future. Kasi management yan eh. Um, um, kasi decision making yan ang management eh. Kasi kung ano yung magiging decision ng management ngayon, yun yung mag affect sa future ng company. And yung decision na ginawa ng management na, na yan, involved ka dyan. Ikaw yung management advisory. Ikaw yung nag-provide ng management advisory services. Kaya futuristic yan. Kasi yung decision na gagawin ng management, it will affect its future. Ngayon sa so, technique of selective nature, bakit? Kasi yung gagawin mong, ano, gagawin mong process, nakadepende sa kung ano yung kailangan ng management. Kaya technique of selective nature. Compare natin sa financial accounting reporting. Ala, may standard eh. So you will just follow the standard. Di ba? O ano sabi ng standard, yun ang gawin mo. May guideline. Pagdating dito sa management accounting, hindi eh. Kung ano yung kailangan ng management, edi, edi you will formulate your process based on that need. Di ba? Balintukin mo yan. O, ayusin mo yan para masatisfy kung ano yung kailangan ng management. Wala kang pinafollow ng standard yan eh. Nakadepende yan so kung ano yung problema na nasarapan nyo. Next is analyze, analyzes different variables given, understand, and, do, and does not set a particular format for information. Gaya ng sabi natin. Di ba? Pagdating sa FAR, may standard na. Sinabi kung anong gagawin. May guideline. E pagdating sa management accounting services, hindi, di ba? Kasi yung gagawin nyo is nakadepende kung ano yung problema sa harapan nyo. Kaya dito, Walang set of particular information. Walang standard. Depe, oo, flexible kayo dito, kumbaga. Ngayon, itong objectives ng objectives and scope ng management accounting. Una, to provide quantitative information to managers, the people who direct and control the entity's operations in the discharge of their functions. Ano yun? Uh, their functions of planning controlling and decision making yun na eh kasi accounting eh so so obviously ang ibibigay mo is quantitative information ikaw yung mag based on the variables available tingnan mo may variances may losses may waste ba ganun di ba tapos from that information i-relay mo yan sa management sabi mo oh ito yung nakalap kong information sa about sa operation show so baka may dito tayo may problema o baka dito yung ano eh dito tayo may variances Parang dito tayo may error, yun. It will help the management sa kanyang function of planning, controlling, and decision making. Scope ng management accounting covers a broader scope for it goes beyond the boundaries of traditional accounting. It goes upon finance, economics, operations, research, statistics, mathematics, or other disciplines as necessary. Ngayon nga nasabi natin, di ba? Management accounting is very flexible because the processes that you are going to create is different each time because you need to cater what is the specific need of the management. Kung anong kailangan ng management, yun ang ibigay mo. Wala kang standards na follow. Oo, flexible ka. So, limitations, different meaning, use approximation, complex data, etc. etc. lang yan. Ngayon, let's go to functions of management. Now, the functions of management are, sakit so tuluwa, The functions of management are the following. Planning, directing and motivating, controlling and decision making. Ngayon dito sa planning, ang gagawin mo dyan, you are setting the goals. Oo, kung anong goals nyo, anong objective nyo. Oo, kung anong gusto nyo ma-achieve. Then predicting future conditions, considering different means or strategies and choosing which one would be appropriate. Oh, di ba? Parang decision making to eh. Ah, hindi. Decision making. Planning to eh. Oo, formulate nyo na. Ano mga step-by-step -step process na gagawin nyo para ma-achieve yung goal nyo? Ano yung mga factors that will affect yung pag-achieve nyo sa goal nyo? Di ba? You will consider many variables in this case. And with that, kita nyo, option A, ganito mangyari. Option B, ganito. Option C, ganito. Ngayon, you now have different options. Yun na. And choosing which one would be appropriate among them. Next is directing and motivating. Yun, may plano na kayo. Ang gagawin nyo, overseeing day-to-day -day activities, making sure of smooth functioning. Super, supervision na yan. Oo, hindi yung supervision na. Drrr. Supervision dito, 
titingnan mo if the process is properly followed, if the step-by-step process on how to achieve the goal of the company is properly followed by everybody. Kasi pag may papucho-pucho dyan, ala, you will compromise the future of the company, you will compromise your goal in achieving uh, your goal. Oh, your goal in achieving the objective, the goal of the company. So make sure na lahat ng involved Uh, sa plano ng company to achieve its goal, it's pro- is properly working. Kasi parang machinery yan eh. Parang makina yan. If may sira dyan kahit isa lang, it will affect the performance of the machine, di ba? O isang gear lang yung nawala, walang timing belt, o di ba? Walang nasira yung isang pulley. Na, compromise ang operations ng company. Next is controlling. Sa controlling, checking the performance of activities against the plan or standard set and deciding what corrective actions are to be taken. Ngayon, di ba? Familiar kayo sa concept ng variances. Ano yung concept ng variances? Meron tayong standard. Ito yung dapat na nangyayari. Pero pag check nyo ng actual, ito, iba yung actual na nangyayari. Kapag iba yung standard, tapos iba yung actual na nangyayari sa operations, may variances yan. Pero kapag same yung actual sa standard na naset, okay, goods lang. Uy, really? Kamangal mo. Kapag same lang yun sila, goods lang. Kaya chin-check mo eh. Okay, ito yung dapat na nangyayari. Ito dapat yung nangyayari. Ito yung actual. Bangga mo. Kung same sila, okay, good. Optimal, optimum. Yung operations ng company. Pero kapag may difference sila. May variances between the two of them. Aba, make sh- check mo kung ano nangyayari. Make sh- oh, you will now have to do corrective actions. Lastly is decision making. An integral part of all of the functions stated above and this is where management accounting information is most, u- is used most. Oo, oh, sa decision making. Kasi yan naman yung punto ng lahat ng ginagawa natin eh. Yan naman yung punto. Wait lang ha. Wait lang. Ano to? Yan naman yung punto ng lahat eh. Di yeah? Gawin mo to, gawin mo yan. Bakit? For decision making. Para si kakabuti ng kumpanya. Ito yan oh. Ito yung graph niya basically oh. Formulating long term and short term plans. Planning yan. Implementing the plans. That's directing and motivating. Implement yun na. Make sure. Implement nyo na. Next is controlling, measuring performance. Chinecheck nyo. Yung standard ba na sinet nyo? Yun ba rin yung actual na nangyayari? If hindi, make corrective actions. And dito naman, comparing actual and planned performance, o same lang. Dito kasi, tinecheck mo. Then dito, kinocompare mo na. O yan, cycle yan. Ngayon, in all those parts, Nandiyan si decision making. Ito naman, to pamilyar siguro kayo, ilan yung beses na ito nadaanan, di ba? Distinction among financial accounting, cost accounting, and management accounting. So, simple lang, kay financial accounting, it is governed by as body of reporting standards. Ibig sabihin, may standards talaga, may guideline, may batas governing over it. Pagdating kay cost accounting, ang pake niya lang sa buhay is to measure the cost. Pagdating kay management accounting, yes, it provides financial information, same as the two. But in this case, it is to the persons within the organization uh, in order to in order for them to make informed judgment and effective decisions which further the organization goals. Dito kasi pagdating kay cost accounting, yung cost lang in the operations ang nagmamatter sa kanya. Di ba? Napakasimple ng buhay niya. Kay management accounting, yes, kukuha siya ng information from these two. Kasi kay management accounting, magdi-decide si management pa paano. Ano yung gagawin nila? Di ba? Ganun kasi simple yung ano nila. Pagdating sa ito, point of comparison between financial accounting and management accounting, yung users ng ano, ng financial accounting, primary, external yan sila. External. Mga investors and creditors yan. Di ba? If you can still remember your FAR or your CFAS, uh, Pagdating sa financial accounting, usually it's general purpose financial accounting. 
Why? Because you are trying to cater to the majority needs or the needs of the majority, the common needs of the majority. The common needs of the majority. Kaya yan, primary, external users, which are the investors and creditors. Pagdating naman sa management accounting class, internal users ang gagamit yan. Kaya, from the word itself, management. So, yung management, yung makikinabang dyan. Yung purpose ni financial accounting is to provide external users and other interested parties with information about the organization's financial position that results from its operation and cash flows and the changes that happen during the period. Si management accounting naman is to provide the internal users, the management, with the information na kung saan the managers uh, that may be used by the managers in carrying out their functions of planning, controlling, decision making, and performance. So, parang same lang yung purpose nila. Eh. Nag-iba lang sila sa ano. Parang nag-iba lang sila sa kanino nila ibibigay. Dito, external users. Dito kay management. Kasi in both of them, yes, the users are going to use that information in their decision making. But take note, kahit na yan yung main difference nila, that is a big difference because that basically classifies them differently. Oh, bakit? Punta tayo sa types of report. Pagdating sa financial accounting, it's a general purpose financial statement because you are you are forming the financial information in such a way that it is uh, understandable to a large group of people. It is understandable to a large group of people because you need to cater the need, the common needs of the majority. Yan kay financial accounting. Punta kay management accounting, there's a various reports. Why? Why? Depending on specific needs eh. That is specific purpose financial accounting eh. Specific purpose financial statements. Kung ano yung kailangan ng management, yun lang ang ibigay mo. Napaka simple eh. Okay, we need this ano. We need this variances from these operations. Yeah? Or we need this ano, cost report from this operation. Yun lang kailangan ng management. Yun ang ibigay mo. Pagdating kasi kay financial accounting, general purpose eh. Broad yung ano niya eh, concept. Broad yung sinasakop niya. Uh, understand mo yun sila. Standards of presentation. Ito. Mayroon tayo pinafollow na ano. Report should be presented in accordance with general accepted accounting principle. Sa Pilipinas, PFRS yan, yung PAS. Another authoritative pronouncement. Kay management, specific, is, uh, management is specific rules or format of presentation. Bakit? Kasi... Management ang, may, management ang magbabasa niyan eh. Management ang may kailangan dyan. So, yung formatting mo dyan, depende sa kung ano yung gusto ng management. Excuse me po. Ito, ent- entity covered. As a whole. Dito, company's value change. Within a company lang. Period cover. At least annually, maybe interim, semi-quarter. Ayan. If you can still remember your intermediate accounting part 3. Ito, anytime. Basta kung kailang kailangan, doon may bigay. Emphasis on time. Yeah, sabi natin, emphasis on finance, fast financial transaction. Historical data yung focus ni financial accounting. Pagdating kay management accounting, strong future orientation. Kasi it is going to be used in decision making. And decision making, yung decision making na ginagawa nila ngayon, that is the decision make, uh, that is going to affect the future of the company. Kaya sabi natin kanina, futuristic si management accounting. Date presented, historical data, etc. etc. Both historical and projected. Emphasis on precision. High precision kay management accounting. And since timely yung kailangan kay management accounting, good estimates lang. Yeah? Kasi kailangan nila ngayon eh. O, bingay mo. Kasi you need to be ano eh, timely when it comes to providing information sa management para yung paggawa nila ng decision making. Hindi late. Hindi na yung parang sa'yo too late. Hmm, di ba? Emphasis on timeliness. Yun, sabi sa natin. And compliance with law. Mandatory kaya, no? Oh, kasi may BIR ka, SEC. Non- not mandatory kay management accounting. Kasi it is only catering the internal needs of the company. And that is the management. Now, similarities between financial accounting and management accounting, the same considerations that makes general accepted accounting principles sensible for the purpose of financial accounting are applied for the purpose of management accounting. 
Kasi pareho silang accounting eh. Ang nangyayari lang talaga kay management accounting, pinaformulate mo, inaayos mo yung presentation mo ng financial statements or ng financial information depending on the needs of the management. Ito, ilang beses natin sinabi eh. Paulit-ulit na na. Pero ganun talaga eh. Pareho sila. Pareho silang accounting. Pareho yung principle sila. Pero sa management accounting, sadyang, i- nag- sadyang naiiba lang yung needs ng users dyan, which is the management. Kaya nyo, both financial and management accounting use the same underlying data and same operating accounting system. Oo, kasi the data does not change eh. It's how you present the data. Yun lang, dyan sila nag eh. Yung pinagkukunan nila ng data, iisa lang. Nagkakaiba lang sa presentation. Bakit? Ulitin natin, sa financial accounting, it needs to satisfy the common needs of the majority. Kaya napaka-broad niyan. General purpose. Pagdating kay management accounting, kung anong kailangan ni management, bigay mo, specific needs. Specific purpose financial accounting. Same lang ang data pinagkukunan, hindi nag-iiba yan eh. Kasi lahat ang data niyan galing sa company itself. Presentation lang talaga. Depending on the needs ng users. Ito, let's go to the financial organization of the company. Ito, so obviously, stockholders, they are the owners. Di ba? Basically, they're the owners eh. Sila yung may equity holdings. Then the chairman of the board, chairman sa board of directors, then the CEO, which is most of the time, the president, train. then the chief operating officer, and ito naman sila, chief, ito, familiar ka dito, chief financial officer, and si chief information officer. Now, si chief financial officer, ito yung mga under sa kanya. Si treasurer, controller, ito yung mga under kay treasurer, ito yung mga under kay controller. Now, chief, si chief financial officer, also called as the financial director, is the executive responsible for overseeing the financial operations of an organization. So, everything financial, about the organization, sayan. Ito yung mga areas controlled by the CFO. Treasury, risk management, taxation, internal audit. Ngayon, ito si controllership. So, basahin nyo lang yan. The function of business, combine, the, the function of business management which combines the responsibility for accounting, reporting, measurement, auditing, taxes, operating controls, controllers. Sa yung nagbamayas ng controllership, meron yung tayong tawag na treasurership. The function of business management holding responsibility, etc., etc. Just read it. Na sir, medyo nahihilo kami sa difference ni controllership at ni treasurership. Simple lang yan. Isipin nyo si controllership sa yung accountant. Sa yung accountant ng company. Sa yung accountant ng organization. So, ang gagawin niya lang is yung accounting and the presentation of that accounting. Pagdating kay treasurership, yung trabaho niya, siya yung nagmamanage ng pera. Siya yung nagmamanage ng investment. Siya yung saan igagastos, saan kukunin yung funds. Si treasurership yan. So, separate yan sila. Si controllership, o sige, dyan, ikaw, mag-report ka lang ng financial accounting data ng company. Ikaw yung accountant. Si treasurership, siya yung bahala sa pag-manage, pag-manage ng funds and investment ng company. Saan gagastusin? Saan kukunin? Saan source? Kaya makita niyo dito, oh, yan ang yung difference ng dalawa. Ito naman, standards of ethical conduct for management accountants, competence, confidentiality, integrity, credibility. Now, let's go to cost classification and allocation. So, dito sa cost classification and allocation, ang pag, basically pag-uusapan natin is we're going to classify the different costs and familiar naman kay dito. So, ito. What is sa cost terms, concepts, and behaviors. Excuse me po. So, ito, nature of cost. So, ngayon, ano ba tong cost? Ano ba tong definition niya? So, under MAS, ang cost is the amount of resources that is sacrificed, yung ginagive up, yung uh, that was given up or used by the entity. Bakit? In order for the entity to obtain some present or future economic benefits which will promote the profit-making ability of the enterprise. So, you know, it is a resource, amount of resource na ginamit, sinacrifice ng entity. Bakit? For the entity to obtain some present or future economic benefit. 
kung saan it will further or it will promote the profit making ability of the enterprise. Ganun ka simple yung cost, no? Oh, cost, may ginastos ka. Yung ginastos mo and expect mo na mayroong kang ma-receive na economic benefit from that gastos. Bakit? Para ma-push forward mo yung proper operations, yung profit making ability ng entity. Dito naman tayo sa cost object. Anything for which cost is computed or assigned. So anything. As long as the cost is being computed on that material, that cost is computed on that thing, that cost is assigned on that thing. Like for example, sa kotse. O yan, that is a cost object kasi you are going to assign cost, you are going to compute cost in relation to the production of that car. Ito, example, product o yung kotse, product line. A business unit, na? store, a branch, di ba? Ganun. Cost object because those, because this, ano, they incur cost. So since they incur cost, compute mo kung ano yung cost na incur nila. Cost drivers, any variable or factor that usually affects cost over a period of time. So, cost drivers. Di ba? Factor siya. Variable siya that affects the cost over a period of time. Production. Gano'ng katagal yung production? Number of hours work. Gano'ng katagal? Or ilang oras yung trabaho ng mga employees? Machinery hours. Labor hours. Kung mas mataas yung labor hours, machinery hours, edi mas mataas yung cost na may incur. Kung mas mababa as compared to normal, eh di, mas bababa rin yung may incur na cost. Basta, cost drivers, it affects the cost over period of time. Ito naman sa cost pool, basically grouping of similar cost item. Yung mga factory overhead, ginugrupo mo yan, inaasuan mo yan para madali yung kanilang classification, yung advertising cost, etc. Pag nating naman sa activity, this is an event, action, transaction, task or unit, of work with a specified purpose. What that's with a specified purpose? Oh, basically, may dalawa tayo dyan. Value adding and non-value adding activities. Na pagdating sa, non, sa value adding activities, these are activities that are necessary to produce a product. Let's say, for example, let's talk about cars. So, sa, sa assembly ng kotse, yun, mahalag yan. Value adding yan. Kasi pag wala yung assembly ng kotse, eh di wala kang kotse na magagawa at the first place. Yung pag-install ng windows, ng pintuan, ng mirrors, ng, ng makina, ng transmission, yeah? paglagay ng gulong, those are value adding activities. Because without those activities, then wala kang kotse na ma-perform or na ma-produce at the first place. Next is the non-value adding activities which are activities that do not make the product more valuable, valuable to the customer. Ibig sabihin, kahit mawala yung non-value activity, adding activities na yan, yung product na ipaproduce mo, for example, yung kotse, maproproduce pa rin at the first place. Kasi non-value adding, ano example niyan? Yung mga unnecessary transportation, ng, ano, yung transportation of the product na ilalagay mo lang yan dito from one place to another kasi gusto mo lang Walang important matter, yeah? mga efficiency sa production or yung mga rework costs. Yung because sa pucho-pucho, may nangyaring pucho-pucho sa assembly line, may hindi proper na nangyari. So, kailangan gawin ulit yung product, yung mga rework costs. Kasi yung mga activities na yan, non-value adding yan. Eh. Hindi sila nag add ng value o ng kahalagahan doon sa product mo. Parang nasasayang yung effort ba? So, make sure, prioritize value-adding activities because that, those activities adds value, adds importance to your product. Ngayon, classification of cost as to function. Meron tayong tatag ng manufacturing and nanofacturing, no, di ba? Dahil review to, di ba? Nagpa-flashback na sa inyo yung mga natutunan nyo nung undergrad nyo. Dito sa manufacturing cost, these are costs incurred or the all costs incurred in the factory to convert raw materials into finished goods. So yun, lahat ng cost that are in that is involved. Lahat ng cost involved sa pag-convert ng raw material sa meron ka into finished goods, yeah? Pagdating sa manufacturing cost, under sa kanya si direct material, direct labor and manufacturing overhead. So yun, under direct materials yung mga raw materials na ginamit mo, mga ingredients kumbaga na ginamit mo na no, raw materials cost that becomes integral part of the finished unit product and that can be converted and economically assigned to specific units manufactured. For example, sa kotse, yung steel, yung aluminum, yung plastic. Those are direct materials. Dito naman, kasi yun ang ginawa mong ano eh, as a body 
of the car o yung goma sa gulong ng kotse. Yun, direct material. Ito naman, direct labor. O labor cost related to the time spent on products that can be conveniently and economically assigned to specific units manufactured. Direct labor. Yung labor na ginamit. For example, sa kotse, sa assembly ng kotse. Kasi may mga, ano pa yan eh, may mga, sa assembly line kasi ng kotse, may mga certain parts dyan na may tao pa rin na kailangang mag-assist or mag, ano, mag-assemble. Hmm. Kaya, panoorin yung mga, ano, sa YouTube, sa mga Facebook, assembly of kotse. Yan yung mag-install ng door for precision, yung mag-apply ng pin, pag-check ng pintura, yung mga markings-markings, paglagay ng emblem, yun. Direct labor. O labor cost related to time spent on the products. Next is the manufacturing overhead. These are all other costs incurred in the factory aside from the materials and direct labor. Yan, mga overhead cost na yan. Ano yan? Electricity cost sa pagpapatakbo ng uh, pagpapatak uh, electricity cost. Yung uh, electricity cost sa pag ano? Ano yung electricity cost? Yung fuel sa pagpapatakbo ng makina. Ng Natag doon, nakalimutan ko ng machinery. Yun, mga manufacturing overhead yan na ma, madidetermine mo na ginamit talaga sa pagmanufacture ng ng product. Ito naman dito sa ano, non-manufacturing cost from the word itself. Ito yung basically hindi integral part sa pagmanufacture, sa pag-create ng product mo. All costs which are not incurred in transforming materials to finish goods. Ibig sabihin nila sa directly involved Gaya na, no, selling, marketing, distribution cost. All costs associated with marketing or selling the product. Kahit tanggalin mo to sila, it will not affect your manufacturing. Hindi yan ma-affect yung pag-convert mo ng raw materials into finished goods. Basically, yun si non-manufacturing cost. Pag tinanggal mo sila, the product will st- uh, would still be produced. Yeah? Next is the general administrative cost. All executive, organizational, and clerical cost associated with general management of the organization. Oh, general. Management of the organization lang yan. Rather than the manufacturing, marketing, select. Yung accounting. Ha? Yung accounting department. HR department. Kailangan ba sila to produce the product? To manufacture? To convert the raw material? Sila ba yung nasa assembly line? Sila ba yung didikit? Hindi, di ba? They're more focused on the general ad- and administrative cost, the running of the company. Tanggalin mo man sila, mapaproduce mo pa rin yung product. Oo. Oh, oh. But don't, don't, Uh, don't be confused. Importante to sila in ano in the operations of the company. Pero when it comes to the manufacturing, hindi sila importante. Because ang importante lang naman sa manufacturing cost is those activities that are really involved in converting the product from raw materials to finished goods. Ngayon, classification of cost as to timing of recognition of expenses. Ito, familiar na kayo ito. Yung ano, di ba? Variable absorption cost ata ito and yung variable cost. Yung inaano natin yung product cost and period cost, di ba? Kung sa product cost, these are costs that are attached or cling to the units that are produced. Ayun, yung inventory natin. And are reported as assets until the goods are sold. Yun, cost of goods sold nakadikit sa product. Big sabihin, ah uh, nagiging ex, nagiging cost lang siya. Yeah, nagiging cost lang siya kapag nabenta na yung product. Tawag natin doon cost of goods sold. So kahit na na-incur pa siya, as long as the product that is recognized as an asset is not yet sold, then you cannot classify it as cost. Kailangan mo nang mabenta. Pagdating sa period cost, cost that are recognized as expense in the income statement on the period income statement income statement on the period in which the cost was incurred basically period cost as long as na incur mo automatic HTPM lagay mo na as expense agad-agad as long as na incur expense mo na agad para cost wag mo na wait mo na natin na mabenta yung inventory ito naman sa classification of cost as to traceability of the cost object direct costs that are related to a particular cost object which uh, pa, uh, tarito, direct uh, as traceability to cost object. Una is the direct cost. These are costs that are related to a particular cost object and can economically and effectively be traced to the cost object. Ibig sabihin, pakita mo yung kotse. Alam mo agad, o oh, yan. Uh, tarito. 
uh, yung cost ng ano, cost ng bintana, cost ng door, cost ng do- ng mirrors, cost ng transmission. Kasi you can you can directly ano eh, associate it. Eh. Kita mo. O yung cost ng paint, kita mo eh. Kita mo sa kotse. Oh, you can effective economical and effectively trace it. Pagdating sa indirect cost, cost that are related to a cost object but cannot practically, economically, and effectively be traced to that cost object. Ito yung example. Yung sa mixing ng pintura. Sabihin natin yung product yung pintura. Yan, daming ano yan eh. Daming substance na minimix yan eh. So, once na mix yan, aba, Diyos ko, mahirap nang i-trace yan. Oo, cost that are related to a cost object but cannot be practically, economically, effectively be traced to that cost object. So, yun. Kasi minix mo na eh. Mahirap na ma-determine. Oo. Mahirap. Not, imp- ah, oh. Not impossible, but cannot be practically, oh. practically, economically, and effectively. So, magsasayang ka lang ng effort to determine that. So, kaysa magsayang ka lang ng effort, indirect cost na lang yan. At ito naman, as to managerial influence, classification of cost to managerial influence, these are the cost na una, controllable, mo? Oh. From the word itself, controllable. These are costs that are subject to significant influence by a particular manager within the time period under consideration. Ibig sabihin, it is controllable by the management. Piliin ba nil, pipili sila. Sa kanan controllable costs, these are costs which a given manager does not have significant influence. Like for example, uh, Uh, payment of premiums in your insurance. Payment of rent. Kontrolado ba yun ng management? Kontrolado ba yun ng manager? Hindi eh. Kasi fi- nakalatag na yung payment dyan eh. Hindi na yung controllable. Non-controllable na on the part of the manager yan. Example ng mga controllable cost. Na under the significant influence of particular manager. Si ano, purchasing manager. Pwede siyang pumili kung ano yung Uh, ano yung tag ito? Raw materials na bibili niya for the production. Yeah? Kung ito, si brand A, ito ang kanyang price, ito yung kanyang quantity sa bidding, ito naman kay brand B, ito naman kay brand C, may choice si purchasing manager kung ano yung bibili niya dyan. Pagdating kay non-controllable, si manager, mga example, yung insurance premiums, yung rent, wala siyang choice dyan. Kailangan niyang bayaran yan. It is beyond his influ- significant influence. Ngayon naman, classification of cost under time frame perspective. Committed and discretionary. Sa committed cost, these are cost. Take nota, time frame perspective. Committed cost, cost that are inevitable as consequence of a previous commitment. Ibig sabihin, nagkontrata na kayo. May kontrata na kayo. So since may kontrata na kayo, wala ka ng choice but to follow that. Committed ka na dyan. Hey, discretionary cost for which the size or the time of incurrence is a matter of choice. Dito, may choice ka pa. Kaya nga, discretionary. Example, oh, before ka mag-enter ng kontrata with the person, oh, pag-usapan nyo muna ano yung particularities ng kontrata nyo, ano yung mga stipulations, magkano yung gastusan. Oh, discretionary yan. Mag- pwede pa kayo magano. Matter of choice pa rin yan. Pero once na <laughs> nagkasundo na kayo sa kontrata, nagpirmahan na kayo, committed na yan. Sa so, tingin time frame perspective. And lastly, lastly ba to? Ay, hindi. And second to the lastly, relevant cost, uh, classification of cost according for decision making. Now, yan, relevant, differential, opportunity, sunk cost. Di ba, meron, uh, meron tayong separate topic dyan, di ba? Under MAS, yung relevant costing or differential analysis sa tayon. So, relevant cost, these are future costs that will differ under Alternative course of action. Basta, basta, uh, tayo. basta pagdating ito kay relevant cost, ito yung mga cost that will affect basically your decision making. Yeah, if, you can, if you can still remember, yeah, meron tayong decision making. If make or break, uh, make or not make, uh, to choose which to close the company or not, tapos kukompare-compare mo, di ba? Kung, nila, kung ano yung magiging total financial effect nito when you will continue the the store or ano yung magiging financial effect nun kapag kinosyo na yung store. So, yun. Relevant costing yun and differential analysis. Yun yung topic yan. Under yun sa kanya si opportunity cost. 
uh, or benefit given up when one alternative is selected over the other. Like for example, nagpipili ka if you are going to outsource your raw materials or you will produce it yourself. Yeah? So, titingnan mo. Pag itong pinili mo, ano yung mawawala sa'yo? Opportunity cost yun. Some costs, these are costs already incurred and cannot be changed by any decision made now or to be made in the future. Ibig sabihin, tapos na para relationship nyo. Tapos na, wala ka nang magagawa. Nasa nakaraan na yan. Some costs na yan. Wala ka nang magagawa. Now, classification of costs according to behavior. Uh, saan ito? Man, oh, ito. Pamilya rin kayo dito. Variable cost, fixed cost. Sa uh, cost accounting yan, di ba? Lumalabas yan sila. So, variable cost. Variable cost, these are costs which change in total amount directly in proportion to the change in the activity level. Pag nagkaroon ng in, uh, activity, ah, huwag muna dito mati. But remain constant on a per unit basis within the relevant range and the time period under consideration. So, take note, ah. Ibig sabihin, yung variable cost is directly proportional to the changes that affect sa activity level. So, pag nagkaroon ng increase sa activity level and then expect that there's an increase in the variable cost and vice versa. But take note, pag iting kay variable cost, yung overall cost nagbabago. But yung per unit, same lang, constant. Take note. Kasi pag ating kay fixed cost, these are costs which the total amount remain constant o yung total cost. But changes inversely to the change in activity level on a per unit basis within the relevant range and time period under consideration. Okay. Uh, yung rent mo sa factory yan o factory. Yan. Fixed cost yan. Yung pambayad mo sa insurance mo, fixed cost na yan. Kasi ano man, kahit ano man mangyari, same pa rin yan sila at the end of the day. Pero si variable cost, yung oh, number of electric, uh, number of hours ginagamit yung electricity, number of labor hours, na, those are variable cost. Pag naging case yung activity level dun, aba, just ko tataas din yung variable cost mo. Pag itin kay mixed cost, these are costs which have bought, the, uh, ano, which has bought variable and mixed component. Ito naman si, uh, si, Step cost. Cost that do not change steadily with changes in activity volume but rather at this key point. Paano ang itsura sir? Ganitong itsura ni step cost yun. Uy, parang straight yung line ka dyan ha. Uy, parang straight man tong line na ito. Uy, ah, may tiko. So ganito yan sa kay step cost. Both for step variable and step fix. Una, okay, dong, 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 dong. Constant lang yan. Dang, 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 dang. Then boy, at a discrete point, tataas yan. Teng. Then, constant na naman. Then, 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 then. Then, at a discrete point, depende sa kung ano yung nilagay nilang factor ni management or anong available factor na question, tataas na naman. It will affect the cost. Dang, dang. Okay, dang, 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 dang. So, on and so forth. Kaya, step ang tawag dyan. Kasi at the first place, until na ma-reach itong discrete point na to, constant yan. Pag na-reach na yung discrete point, boom, tataas yan. Same lang. Then, boom. Yan si step cost. Ngayon, let's go to cost behavior analysis. Definition of relevant terms. So, cost behavior refers to how cost reacts to changes in the level of business activity. Kaya, cost behavior. Ano yung magiging behavior ng cost kapag nagkaroon ng changes sa level ng business activity? Magiging mabait ba siya? Magiging masama ba siya? Let's see. Relevant range. A range of activity that reflects the company's normal operating range. Now, take note. Relevant range. Mahalaga ang assumptions na to. Bakit? Basahin mo natin. Relevant range assumption. Anong, sa, sabi dito, relevant range refers to the band of activity within which the identified cost behavior patterns are valid. Any level of activity outside this range may have a different cost behavior pattern. Meaning lang yan, as long as the identified cost behavior, uh, the identi, ah, uh, tag ito, As long as yung mga na pinpoint mong cost behavior is within the relevant range, yung gagawin mong assumption, yung gagawin mong results, yung ipoproduce mong as a uh, ipoproduce mong statement tama. As long as it is within the relevant range, kaya mahalaga yung mga assumption na yan. Oo, pag nakita mo 
na yung level of activities outside the range na. Then yung gagawin mong assumption, yung gagawin mong report, medyo ano na yan eh, medyo hindi na hindi na proper, hindi na tama. Hindi, oo, but pagdating kay relevant range assumption and same kind din kay time period, ah, oh, time period and linear nin linear huh? linear ah, na bubul na linearity assumption make sure that it is within the range para yung report mo yung ipepresent mong data is proper yan yung point ng cost behavior assumption to dito kay ano time period assumption the cost behavior patterns identify the true only over specified period of time beyond this the cost may so a different behavior linearity assumption within the relevant range there's a strict linear relationship between the cost and the cost driver cost may therefore be shown graphically as straight line so take note anong purpose ng assumption na to it is to make sure na as long as the data available is within the assumption then the report that you are going to present is going to be valid is going to be true oh pag lumabas yan sa behavioral pattern yung mga data na nakalap mo then medyo mag-iiba yang ano mo ire-report mo ito naman the total cost function ito familiar na ka hindi lang sa math nyo pa lang una to nakita di ba sa math ah Una nyo tong nakita sa mat ngayon and nagulat kayo na biglang inapply sa inapply sa accounting natin. So to y is equal to a plus bx. So si y sa yung total cost, si a sa yung fixed cost, si b sa yung variable cost per cost driver and si x yung activity level or yung cost driver itself. Di ba kita niyo to si fixed cost constant lang yan. Si a. Ito namang ano, variable cost mo magbabago yan. Oo, depende sa anong activity level mo. Okay, now let's go to methods of separating mixed cost. Now, bakit natin kailangan i-separate ang mixed cost? Diba, as you have said, mixed cost is basically, saan yan? A cost which have both variable and fixed component. So, bakit natin kailangan silang i-separate? Kaila, ba, paano natin? Kasi, kailangan natin ma-determine if alin yung variable, alin yung fixed. Bakit? Para malaman natin, paano natin sila i-manage. Kasi 'di ba? Ang pag-manage mo ng variable is very different sa pag-manage mo ng fixed because the two has very different nature. 'Di ba? Si variable cost ano yun siya? Basically, uh, the cost is affected by the increase or decrease or the movements of the activity driver. 'Di ba? Of the tawag dito, activity ano yung proper term, activity level, activity driver, activity level. Oo, the total cost is influenced by the movements of the activity level. Pero, yung per unit niya is the same. Pagdating kay fixed cost, opposite naman. The total cost remains the same. But, the per unit cost is different depending on the changes in the activity level. So, from that alone, the nature of the two is very different. So, since the nature of the two is different, how you manage it, is also going to be different. So, pagdating kasi sa mixed cost, since mixed yan sila, eh, mahihirapan kang i-manage yan kasi hindi mo alam kung, ala, kasi variable to, ala, si fix ko, fix to, ay, hindi, di ba, mahihirapan ka. So, before that, kailangan mo muna silang i-separate. Alamin mo kung alin dyan yung fix, uh, alamin mo alin dyan yung variable, alam mo kung dyan yung fix. So, may mga methods tayo to know that. Una, ito familiar kayo dito. Alam, lahat ng sasabihin natin dito sa review, familiar kayo because this is only a review. Si account analysis method, an account is classified as either variable or fixed. Paano? Based on the analyst, analyst, based on the analyst prior knowledge of how the cost in the account behave. So, based on his professional judgment, kumbaga, na ito, ay na, oh, yan, ito, fixed to, ito, variable to. Based on his prior knowledge. Pagdating sa engineering approach, it involves a detailed analysis of what cost behavior should be. Ito, same lang. May pagkapareho siya sa, ano eh, sa account analysis. The difference is, ang gagawa nito, ang mag analyze dito is the industrial engineer's evaluation of different factors. Ito, mas professional level to eh. Kasi dito sa account analysis, based on the prior knowledge lang of the analyst, about sa mga accounts, behavior ng accounts. Pagdating sa engineering approach, based sa professional judgment of an expert. 
which is the industrial engineer. Pagdating naman dito sa conference method, each representative of different departments is convened to discuss the estimated costs that the departments will incur during the year and to be sorted out as either depending on the production, which is the variable, or not, which is the fix. Yan dito, may conference sila. Meeting-meeting na to sila. Paano nila ikaklassify? So, kita nyo dito, no? based on the ano eh. Based on the sub- subjective judgment. Oo, kung anong feel nila, based on their kokote, yun. Fix yan, variable yan. Iba naman pagdating kay statist- statistical or the scatter graph method. Pagdating kay scatter graph method, this is, se- uh, this is a separation method daw. Where cost and past activity levels are plotted. May graph ka, then you will plot that sa graph. Where costs are plotted on the vertical axis, kung saan, ver- di ba? Alalahanin natin ang math natin. Pag sa vertical, that is the dependent variable with the corresponding activity levels. So, yung activity levels plotted sa horizontal axis, yung pahiga, consider natin yun as independent variable. So, ito yung mga steps involved eh. O na. So, yan. Ito yung graph mo. So, ang sabi, saan yan? On a graph, plot actual cost on the vertical axis using the period under which ah uh, okay on the graph, plot actual cost on vertical axis during the period under the study again uh, under against ah uh, under study against the volume levels. Then the next is the line no best fits. So na magplot ka lang yan kung sa kung saan sa yun sila. Oh, isipin mo o oh, dito yun sila. Dito, dito, hmm, dito, depende. O na, kasi dito, activity, etong X mo, eto ang Y mo, di ba? Math, math. If you can still remember math, magplat ka. Kung ano, papano yung, uh, dito yung cost, uh, dito yung cost, then activity level. So, kung gaano kataas yung activity level mo, eh di sasama dyan yung cost. Kaya nga, dependent variable ang cost eh. Activity level lang independent. Kasi nakadepende ang cost mo sa activity level na mangyari. Ngayon, meron ka ng plot. The line of best fit in the... In the uh, pangit itong English ito. The line of best fit is then drawn by visual inspection o visual inspection daw. Of the plotted points. The line representing the trend shown by the majority of the points. So, ito. Subjective judgment na naman. Tingnan mo, ano yung mas nagbe-best fit eh. O ito, kita natin dito. Ito yung line na magbe-best fit. Ito yung line eh. So, sabi natin yung straight to. Sabi natin yung straight to. Yan, yung line na magbe-best fit. O, yun. Kasi subjective judgment to eh. Ngayon, the fixed cost is estimated by extending the left end of the line to the vertical axis. So, dito. O, yan ang fixed cost mo. Ngayon, The variable cost rate of the slope or cost rate or slope of the cost line is determined by dividing the ah uh, tag ito by dividing the difference between any two level of activities by the difference in cost corresponding to the same level of activities. Sir, makahilo man 'yan, anong meaning 'yan? If you can still remember yung formula ng slope, 'di ba? Yung formula ng slope yung y is equals to ra- to rise over run, 'di ba? Yung rise over run para mahan, na, malaman mo yung ano which is basically equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 rise over run di ba o yan pag anong answer mo dito yun yung variable cost mo so ito yung fixed cost mo ito yung fixed cost mo dito naman ito yung variable cost mo O yan yung kay scatter graph method. Meron siyang mixture ng subjective judgment. Meron siyang ano, objectivity. Yung subjective judgment niya, yung pagpili mo ng line. Yung ob- yung objective judgment may yung pag formula na. O. Ngayon, high low method. Ito yung pinaka favorite natin. Tingnan mo lang yung high, tingnan mo yung low. Basic. Now, high low method is a uh, simple ano, is a simple cost separation method by analyzing the change in cost between the high and low activities. So, this method is based on the rise over run formula. Ito. 
of a straight line. So, take note, high-low method, and sa ano, take note, pagdating dito, hindi natin kinoconsider mga outliers. Diba? Automatic diyan kinoconsider. Yung sinasabi naman yun sa problem eh, kung outlier yan o hindi, so don't worry. Pero in real life, professional judgment na yan. So in real life. So ito formula, B is equals to, uh, tawag dito, the change in Y over the change in X. Yung ba yung meaning ng triangle? Yung meaning triangle, no? Change in Y over the change in X. So ito, is equals to the cost of the highest level of activity minus the cost of the lowest activity level divided by the difference of the highest activity level and the lowest activity level. So kita nyo dito, Y dependent variable sa taas, yung activity level, which is the independent variable, yung denominator. Ito naman yung least square regression, regression method. If you can still remember, yung A na BEX, then uh, A, na, A na BEX, and then yung X, X sa BEX, BEX, di ba? Ito yun sa baba, oh. And yung ito yung mga alternative formula. So, A na BEX, X, X sa BEX, BEX. Di ba? Ganyan yung style natin dati. So, the least square regression method uses mathematical formulas to fit the regression line. Unlike in scatter graph, where the line is fitted by visual inspection, this method involves the computation of a regression line. Take note, regression, li regression line. Parang itong ginawa natin kanina. Ang, regle ang, regre tayo. ang regression line, basically, it is simply a line that fits the data. That properly fits the data. Yun lang yung meaning ng regression line. So, may mga regression line analysis pa yan. Solving, solving. Pero basically, yun yung regression line. It is a line that simply fits or fits the data that we have. In this case, this is it. Oh, yung simple line na yun. It fits the data that we have. In trying to separate the mixed cost or the variable and the fixed cost. So, multiple regression analysis, so ganitong problemahin, the multiple regression analysis is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a statistical method of separating fixed and variable costs which is used when the dependent variable cost is caused by more than one factor of independent variable. Ito, summary of strengths and weaknesses of the difference met, different methods. Sa account analysis, yung strength niya provides a detailed expert analysis. Oo, kasi may professional judgment dyan eh on the cost behavior of each account. However, since that is professional judgment, weakness and subjective. Oo. Engineering method, based on studies of what future cost should be rather than what past cost have been. However, not particularly useful. Bakit? When the physical relation between out inputs and output is indirect. Scatter graph. Kung makita nyo, wala dito si ano, si conference, kasi same lang eh. Oo. Subjective rin yan. Kung anong sa tingin nila, yun. Scatter graph uses all the observation of cost data relatively easy to understand and apply. However, yung problema dyan, the fitting of the line to the observations is subjective. Oh, so, kasi ito, napili natin eh. Oh. Difficult to do where several independent variables are to be used. High-low method, simple lang. Pero, sa sobrang pagkasimple niya, it uses only two data points which may not produce accurate results. Least square regression uses all of the cost observation, ah, uses all of the observations of cost data. Huh? Kasi kung makita mo lang, if you can still remember kung paano yung kinocompute, di ba marami yan, no? Tapos isa-isa natin yun. The line is statistically fit to the observation. A measure of the goodness of fit of the line to the observations is provided. Relatively easy to use with the computers and sophisticated calculators. However, ang problema kahi least, re least square regression analysis, napaka stenuous, marami kang gagawin. Require several relatively stick assumptions to be satisfied for the results to be valid. Oo, and matrabaho siya, di ba? You can still remember. Tapos magkamali ka lang sa isala, Diyos ko, mali na rin yung iba mong ginawa. Now, to sa correlation, basically, from the, ano, Sa correlation analysis, ang ginagawa lang dyan, gaya na sabi dito, measure of the cost variable, of the cost vari of the covariation between the dependent and independent variable. Meaning, tinitingnan lang natin dito is, ano yung relationship between the two? Anong nangyayari between the two? This is the analysis of the relationship between the dependent and independent variable cost. Take note, dependent variable is the cost itself. 
independent variable is the activity level. If all plotted points fall on the regression line, tandaan, regression line, this is simply a single line that fits the data properly. So, ang sabi, if all plotted points fall on the regression line, there is a perfect correlation. Ibig sabihin, ito yung regression line mo. Regression. <laughs> regression line mo, tapos all the data fits to it. Di ba? Parang lahat ng data nandyan sa regression line mo. Then, you can see that there's a perfect correlation between the dependent and independent variables considering that in the regression line, nandito yung dependent variable mo, nandito yung independent variable mo. Pag perfect yan lahat, ibig sabihin lahat ang data plots mo nandito sa line. Then, there's a perfect correlation between them. Between the two variables that you have. Now, if correlation between the cost and the cost driver is high and the past relationship between such variables will continue in the future, ibig sabihin, then the cost driver chosen will be used for will be useful for predicting future levels of the cost being analyzed. Meaning, ibig sabihin, kapag, o yun, sabihin natin na, wala tong ibang points na to, gaya na assumption natin kanina, lahat ng data points nandito sa line. So, ibig sabihin, there's a perfect correlation. Then, it is safe to assume na in the future, ganun rin yung mangyayari if nothing changes. So, since if ganun rin yung mangyayari, take note, with nothing changing, then you can predict ano yung mangyayari. You can project ano yung mangyayari sa future operations? Yun yung sinasabi. So, ito po uh, formula niya, how to measure correlation, coefficient of correlation represented by R, measure of the extent of the linear relationship between the two variables, yung independent and dependent, yung cost and yung activity level. So, points of consideration, range of values of R, from negative 1 to 1. So, kapag nag-solve ka, ito yung formula o, oh. Pag nag-solve ka zero, ibig sabihin walang correlation yung dalawa. Walang correlation ng cost mo, walang correlation ng activity level mo. Kapag yung R mo is 1, the, ibig sabihin there's a positive perfect correlation. Meaning, there's a direct relationship between the two variables. Direct relationship, ibig sabihin, pag nag-increase yung activity level, mag-increase yung cost mo. Ganon, di ba? Kasi independence activity level, dependency cost. Ngayon naman, kapag nag-negative 1 yung R mo, then there's a perfect negative naman, correlation. Meaning, may indirect relationship sila, may inverse relationship, kumbaga, between your activity level and your cost. Pag tumas yung activity level mo, then yung cost mo, pababayan, no? Pababayan. Pababa yung line yan. Pag tumas yung activity level mo, edi bumababa yung cost mo. Pagating sa positive perfect correlation, pataas naman yan. Yeah? Pataas naman yan. Papataas yung activity level mo, papataas rin yung cost mo. Ito yung formula, gaya na sabi sa baba. Ito naman, additional points na lang, coefficient determination, etc. etc. So, tapos tayo sa first video. And instead na gagawa na pa ng second video, i-combine ko na lang dito yung next topic para after ng videos na to, diretso na kayo doon sa iba. Okay, next, video, next topic na. So, dito na ngayon tayo sa cost volume profit analysis. Daw dito sa CVP analysis, ito na yung, if matatandaan nyo pa, ito yung mga may, may break even tayo, may margin of safety tayo, yung mga uh, may degree of operating leverage, ito na yun, ito na yung topic na yun, yung kinocompute natin yung break even. Still alive and very pretty. So, ano ba tong CVP analysis? No, basically, this is the systematic Systematic examination of the relationships among cost, cost driver, activity level, or the volume, and profit. So, you know, cost, cost driver, uh, between the three, oh, the cost, the cost driver, or yung activity level, or yung volume, and the profit, the relationship between the three. Now, it is a powerful, a powerful tool used by the management in order for to help them understand the interrelationship among cost, volume, and profit in an organization by focusing on the interaction between these five CVP elements. Meaning, titingnan nila. Kapag nagkaroon ng change sa sales price sa papadak, anong magiging effect sa iba? Kapag nagkaroon ng changes sa activity level within the relevant range, of course, relevant range assumption eh. Kasi nagiging valid lang yung ating presentation, yung ating data, yung ating report, if the activity is within the relevant range. Yeah. Pag nagkaroon ng changes sa activity level, ano magiging effect sa iba? Kapag nagkaroon ng changes sa variable cost per unit, ano magiging effect sa iba? Same kay total fix, ano magiging changes dyan? Anong effect sa iba? Sales mix. So, 
basically talking about or analyzing the relationship between this element sa si- element sa CVP si analysis. Bakit? Kasi titingnan natin eh kung ma- pag may magagawin ba tayo dito sa isang element, anong mangyayari? Mag-increase ba yung profits natin? Mag-increase ba yung sales natin? Yeah, ganun. Analysis 'yan. Ngayon, the application of the CVP analysis may be applied to the fa- to the planning and decision making function of the management which may involve choosing the type of product to produce and sell. Oo, aling product dito yung mas malaki yung mabibigay sa ating sale and at the end, mas ma- ma- malaki yung mabibigay sa ating revenue. Kasi may mga instances na kahit mas mataas yung sale yan, pero dahil mataas yung cost rin yan, mas mababa yung profit na marireceive nyo as compared sa other options. Di ba? May ganun yan. Just because mataas ang sale yan, sales yan, that's not necessarily mean na yung profit na marireceive mo mataas rin. Oo, kasi baka mataas rin yung cost yan eh. So, anong type of product to produce and sell? Sell. Pricing policy to follow. Ano yung pricing policy mo na at the very least, mababawi mo yung capital mo. Makaka-break even ka. And further than that, kailang ka magkakaroon ng profit. Or ng, oh, ng profit. So, pricing policy. Next is the marketing strategy to use. So, yun. Papaano? Ah, uh, Anong marketing strategy yung magiging case ng sales mo? Aling marketing strategy yung alam mong magiging, magkakaroon ng negative effect sa sales mo? Kaya yeah, ganun. And type of productive facilities to acquire. So yun. Now, before we do analysis, may mga assumptions na kailangan mo nang sundin. Oo. Dapat sundin tong assumptions na to para yung kung ano man yung magiging result ng CVP analysis mo, magiging valid. Na yung una, all costs are classified as either variable or fixed. Meaning, kapag may mixed cost dyan, ang, under, ang, ang assumption is na separate na, na segregate na. Alam mo na kung alin yung variable, alam mo na kung alin yung fixed. Bakit yan mahalaga sir? Kasi dito napapasok si contribution margin. Na. An- anong na? I mean, na di ba? If you can still remember, contribution margin. Aminin lang yan, sales revenue, kapag ikong compute natin, sales revenue, minus the variable cost is equals to the contribution margin. Tapos, pag ibabawas mo rin yung fixed cost, doon na yung profit. O, di ba? Ano? Sales revenue minus the, ano? Minus the variable cost contrib- is equals to the contribution margin minus the fixed cost is equals to the profit. So, yun. Cost and revenue relationships are predictable and linear over a range of activity, a relevant range of activity and specified period of time. So, variable cost per unit and total fixed cost remains constant over the relevant range. Unit sale price and market conditions remain unchanged. Changes in cost in revenue are brought by changes in volume alone. Changes in volume alone. So, you know, kung magkakaroon ng change sa cost in revenue, dahil lang yan sa volume. There is no significant change in the level of inventory. Meaning, kung magkano yung na-produce mo, ganun rin yung nabenta mo. Production, production is equals to sales. Mga assumptions lang yan. Sales mix remains constant for a company that sells, sells multiple product. So, kung, one, kung out of your 100 sales, 50 yung product A, 30 yung product B, 20 yung product C, that remains con- constant all throughout. Technology as well as productive efficiency constant rin and time value of money concept is ignored. So, bakit yan? Mga constant lang man yan eh. Hal- halos mga constant. Parang perfect condition ba? Of course, that is the assumption. Bakit? Para maging valid yung data na makakalap mo. Para maka- maka- makita mo yung proper connection between the two. Oo, kailangan may consistency. Para makita mo yung connection between the datas. Between the elements. So ito, break-even analysis and target profit analysis in a single, t- take note, single, ikaw yan, product company. Definition of break-even point. I still love it, belly breathing. So sa break-even point, <laughs> understandable naman to, the sales volume or in pesos man yan or in units, take note, uh, where total revenues equals total cost. Ibig sabihin, wala kang kita, wala ka ring loss. Wala kang profit, wala ka ring loss. Quits lang. Kaya nga, break even. Thus, at this point, the entity experienced neither profit nor loss. Now, paano natin kinocompute ang break even? May tatlong approach tayo. Una, yung CV, uh, graphic approach. CVP graph, also called as break even graph, gagawala ka ng graph. O, itong line na to, this is your cost. Ay, this is your cost. This is your revenue. Itong line na to, yan yung total cost mo. As you can see, di ba? 
hindi sa baba nag-start yung total cost but rather dito. Bakit? Kasi kahit wala ka mang pinoproduce, nag-i-incur ka pa rin ng fixed cost. So kahit wala kang production, kahit wala kang manufacturing, pero open pa rin yung company mo, nag-i-incur ka pa rin ng fixed cost. Kaya dito yung start niya sa taas. Don't forget about that. So pag nag-start ka na ng manufacturing mo, ng producing mo, yun, mag-taas na yun siya. Kasi nag-incur ka na ng variable cost. Ngayon, kung saan nagbangga si revenue at si cost line, yan yung break-even point. oh yung party dito, loss yan. Dito, re- profit ka na dyan. Dito sa gitna, break-even yan. Yung another type is the equ- equation method or algebraic. So, huwag natin galawin yan. Math na yan. Ito yung ginagalaw natin, yung pangatlo. The contribution margin method or formula approach. Take note, contribution margin is the difference between the sales, revenue, and the uh, contribution margin in peso is the difference between the sales revenue and the variable cost. Contribution margin per unit is the difference between the sales per unit minus the variable cost per unit. Or other way, ang ano dyan is i-divide mo yung contribution margin in peso by the number of units sold. Diba? Ganun. Maraming ways tayo dyan. So, ito. This method uses directly the formula in finding the break-even point in units man or in pesos. So, break-even point, ito si Be- Bepi. Break-even point in peso. Kita nyo yung P sa baba. Peso yan. Total fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio. Take note, contribution margin ratio is the contribution uh, ang tawag ito? is the contribution margin yeah, divided by the sales revenue. Contribution margin ratio yon. So, yung anong lalabas dyan? Then, meron ka ng break-even point in peso. Ngayon, kapag yung break-even points in units mo is available naman, then you can compute this this way. Break-even points per unit times the sales price per unit or the SPU. Ngayon, in looking for break-even point per unit, ito naman, per unit, hindi per peso, ito naman yung lalabas. Total fixed cost din, pero contribution margin per unit na. Per unit na. So, dito, ratio, dito, oy nag-end siya. Punta tayo sa, oy saan yun? Dito, per unit na. So, dito nga sa target profit analysis, dito. At certain instances, entities needs to determine the volume of sales in pesos man or in units that they need in order to achieve a specified amount of desired target and profit. So, dito sa break-even point, tinitingnan mo lang, gano'ng ka, ano? Anong point kung saan? Uh, anong point kung saan magkakaroon ng break-even yung company ko kung saan mababawi ko yung capital? Yung cost na nagastos ko? Dito naman sa target profit analysis, titansya mo, Anong volume of sales? Kasi take take note, to, yung assumption natin, costs in revenue are brought only by changes in volume alone. So, anong volume of sales ang kailangan ko para ma-achieve itong target profit ko? So, ito, may formula tayo. For target sales, for uh, in pesos, total fixed cost plus the desired profit kung magkano mo yung gusto mo, divided by the cost margin, contribution margin ratio. Kung in units naman yung gusto mo na target sales, edi total fixed cost divided by the desired profit divided, ah, ah, plus the desired profit divided by the contribution margin per unit. So yan, but take note, yung DP natin dito, yung desired profit natin dito is before tax. Na sir, paano pag may tax? Paano pag after tax yan? Meron tayo dyan. Ito yun. After tax desired profit. Ito na. Compute mo lang. After tax profit divided by 1 minus the tax rate. Kung anong lalabas dito, then yun ang apply mo dito. Ngayon, desired profit as percentage of sale. May mga questions yan na yung desired profit mo, naka ano lang, depende sa percentage of sale. Diba? Dito yan. Uh, for target sales, ano? total fixed cost divided by the difference of contribution margin per ratio and profit ratio. Ibig sabihin, yung profit mo divided by the total sales or the sales revenue. Yung profit ratio nun. Same dito. Uh, total, pag per units naman, total fixed cost, yun, formula, formula na lang to. Contribution margin per unit and profit per unit. Ngayon, itong assumption dito ay single product. 
na sir, eh, typical naman sa company, multiple product sir, di ba? Oo. With that, ito yun. Multiple product company. So, sa multiple product break-even point, the total volume of sales, whether in peso or in unit man yan, that a company that produces or sales or sells multiple products generates where the company experience neither profit nor loss. Neither no, no, neither loss nor profit. Multiple product break-even point nga eh. Ngayon, yung product break-even point, the share of an individual product in the total break-even point of multiple products company based on the predetermined sales mix. So, yung magiging basis nyo sa paghanap ng individual product break-even point is hanapin mo yung total break-even point ng company. I-multiply mo dun yung predetermined sales mix ng product na yun. Sales mix is the relative proportion in which a company products are sold. So, ito yung mga ano, when it comes to break-even analysis for a multiple product company. In a multiple product company, a determining, deter, in determining the break-even point may involve additional computations due to the following considerations. So, first, considering na maraming products na dito eh. Multiple na tayo, kapatid. Fixed cost incurred by a company cannot be usually identified with the specific products that the company produces and or sell. Bakit? Kasi, fixed cost yan eh. Overall na yan eh. Oo, overall na yan. So, mahirap i-determine. Alin yung nagastos mo dito? Alin yung nagastos mo dito? Alin yung nagastos mo kay product A? Alin yung nagastos mo kay product B? Kasi yung pinag-usapan dito is fixed cost. Kasi di ba fixed cost, total cost yan, constant. Pero yung per unit cost yan, variable. Nag-iiba. Oo, depending sa activity level. Ngayon, it, product may differ in terms of its contribution to the profit of the company, of course. Oo, kahit na sabihin natin ice cream yung pinuproduce ng company, pero mas mabenta yung yung uh, double dots niya kaysa sa Rocky Road. Oo, parehong ice cream. Pero iba yung brand, iba yung product eh. Mas mabenta yung double dots kaysa over sa Rocky Road. So, iba yung contribution na mabibigay ng mga products na yun sa company. Due to the different selling price, viable cost, and sales volume of each product thus differently contributes to the recovery of the total co fixed cost incurred by the entity. So with that said, tiris tiris to eh. With that said, ito yung computation niya. Now in order for us to compute for the break-even point for multiple products company, instead of using a single contribution margin ratio or contribution margin per unit, ang gagawin natin dito is we are required that the same shall be expressed in terms of their Weighted average values. So, mag-weighted average tayo dito. Oh, may summation na dito. Magsa-summation tayo dito, kapatid. Weighted average ano? Ito. Weighted average of the contribution margin ratio or the weighted average of the contribution margin per unit. Bakit? Kasi multiple products to eh. So, kailangan mo yung summation yan sila. Kailangan mo yung hahanapin yung weighted average nila. Kasi eh, multiple products ulitin natin. Using the sales mix of each product as the basis for the weight assignment. Now, in, para hanapin yung break-even point. Kasi itong break-even point natin is the total break-even point. Yung unang hinahanap natin. Ang formula dyan, break-even point in pesos is the total fixed cost divided by the weighted average of the contribution margin ratio. Or pag per unit naman, eh di total fixed cost divided by the weighted average of the contribution margin per unit. So, yung WAC. Ngayon, sir, paano yun i-compute yung WAC? WAC? Yung WAC, ay uh, yung WAC, si weighted average CMR and yung weighted average contribution margin per unit. Ito yun, paano sila i-compute? Dalawang, dalawang styles tayo meron. Yung una, summation. Ibig sabihin, ililista mo lahat ng product. Product A plus the product B. Summation eh. Yung product A, yung CMR ni product A and yung sales mix niya. Plus, CMR ng product A, product B, and sales mix niya, product C, products D, E, depende kung ilang ilang products yan meron. Isummation mo siya para lumabas yung weighted average. Same rin kay dito. Pero kung given naman yung total CM, eh di na lang gawin mo. Tot or, binigyan ka ng option. Total CM, contribution margin, di ba di ba di total sales? Dito naman, total CM, Di ba di ba di? Total units. Pag hindi naman given to, eh ito. Pero pag given, ito na lang. Di ba? Ngayon sir, paano malalaman yung sales mix ng product na yan? 
Ito yung formula niya, oh. Sales mix in pesos, ito. Yung sales ng individual product na yan, divided by the total sales of the company. Same here. Yung unit sold of that individual product, divided by the, to the total unit sold. So, yun. Meron ka na malalagay dito. Ngayon, sir. Meron na tayong ganyan. Meron na tayong total. Break even point per in peso and BEP in units total. So, paano namin malalaman yung individual individual break even point ng mga product sir eto na yon eto yung gagawin mo the break even point shall then be distributed to the different products using the following formula formula at sa di ba tanda natin dito ang sabi dito yung product break even point para malaman yan is imo multiply ng total break even point sa predetermined sales mix ng product which is eto na o yung sinob natin So, yung break-even point, yung total, times mo sa sales mix ng particular product na yan. Kung ano nga labas, edo yung product BEPPB. Same dito. O, yeah. may flow yan. Ito yung total break-even point, hanapin mo. Para mahanap tong denominator, ito yan. Para mahanap itong sales mix, itong formula niyan. Ngayon, meron ka ng total break-even point. Gusto mo nang malaman yung break-even point per product. O, ito nang gagamitin mo. Yung total break-even point na meron ka, multiply mo sa sales mix ng product, ng particular product na yun. Ngayon naman, target profit analysis, target sales determination ng multiple product company is basically similar to that of a single product company. So, similar lang. Ngayon, margin of safety. Ano yan? Okay. Peanuts. Dito sa margin of safety, Pinag-usapan dito yung excess na meron ka. The excess of budgeted or actual sales over the break-even volume is yun yung margin of safety. Meaning kung ito yung actual sales mo, ito yung break-even point mo, itong sa gitna ang margin of safety mo. Ito yung sales mo, ito yung break-even point mo o yung break-even mo, Itong sa gitna yung margin of safety mo. Oh, anong allowance ka meron? So, it is the amount or units of sales by which actual or budgeted sales may be dropped, decrease without resulting to a loss. So, ito yung formula niya. Oh. Oh, SP, BP, or the sales, revenue, oh, the sales in peso, minus the break-even point in peso, or the sales in units minus the break even points in units yung ratio naman is ito oh yan simple lang ito naman sa operating leverage this is the measure of how sensitive net operating income is to a given percentage change in sales meaning gaano ka sensitive yung ano natin yung uh, excuse me po gaano ka sensitive yung ating net operating income kapag nagkaroon ng movement sa sales kung tumasang sales gaano ka, ano yung gaano niya inaapekt ga, ah, gaano niya may, how much is the effect of the changes in the sales sa ating net operating income gaano ka gaano siya na influence ng changes ng sales it is also considered as the extent to which the company uses fixed cost in its cost structure So, degree of operating leverage, yan na yun to. Si Dol. So, also called as the operating leverage factor, so LLF, this serves as a multiplier in measuring the extent of the change in profit before tax resulting from the change in sale. So, ito si Dol. Contribution margin versus, uh, divided by the profit before tax. So, to compute the percentage change in profit, oh, change, the percentage change in profit is equals to the percentage change in sale times the doll. So, yan na. O, oh, may mga questions sa board exam. Hanapin mo muna yung degree of operating leverage. Tapos, may ang question yan. The, ano, the increase in, the increase in sales is 50%. The increase in sales is 50%. So, the question is, how much is go, is how much is the change that the increase in sales will affect the 
net operating income. So ngayon, meron kang 50% oh, increase in sales. Times mo yan sa doll. Sa degree of operating leverage. Then yung maging labas dyan is yung 50% na increase sa sale, e eh, din yung percentage of change na na-influence niya sa net operating profit. So yan o. Oh, yan ang pinag-usapan eh. How sensitive is the net operating income sa changes in sales? Ngayon, tapos tayo sa CVP. Let's go to standard costing. Ngayon, dito sa standard costing, as you have said kanina, ito na yung may mga variances. Oo, dito na yung lalabas yung mga variances. Sakay, standard costing. So, ano ba itong standards? So, according kay Roque, o kay Master Roque, sa book niya noong 2013, standards measure of acceptable performance which can be treated as a benchmark, mm, guideline mo, that established by management para it will serve as a guide in making economic decisions. Ibig sabihin, standards yan eh. So, parang accounting standards eh. May guideline ka, may basis ka kung ano yung dapat gawin, ano yung dapat ma-achieve. Yun yung purpose ng standards. Now, there are two types of standards. Yung ideal standard and yung practical normal standard. The ideal standard, this is a standard that consider optimum performance with perfect operating conditions. Ibig sabihin, walang mali. Walang room for error. But as we know, bihira yan mangyari sa real life. Kaya nandyan si practical normal standards. Now, this is, that, this is a standard that allows for imperfection in the operations such as operating delays, like ganyan breakdowns, waste, spoilage, etc. and human limitations. So, si ideal standard, perfect condition sa kanya, no room for error. Pero, as we know, mas appropriate gamitin si practical normal standard kasi as it takes into consideration eh, na hindi lahat ng bagay perf- ng things under the operation of the company, especially those not under the control of the company, is in perfect condition. Liba room for ano, error ba? Room for adjustments, room for parang wiggle room. Ngayon, uses of standard, ha, gutom na ako. Uh, uses of standard costing system, sa planning, nagagamit yan. Motivating, controlling, decision making, and per, lalo na sa performance evaluation. Kasi dito, iti-check mo na. Ito yung actual na nangyari, ito yung standard set mo. Tingnan mo, kung na- same ba sila dalawa or baka may difference tawag doon variances and as you know gaya na sabi tin kanina kapag may variances ayusin mo correct the error correct the mistake ngayon kind of standards in an costing system yung quantity per unit and yung price rate cost per unit or per per quantity or per unit ngayon meron tayong actual standard and budget si actual this is the total amount or a per unit basis. Nalalaman lang natin itong si actual kapag tapos na yung production and the cost are incurred already. Kasi actual nga eh. Hindi mo yung malalaman beforehand kasi ang actual yun yung mismong nangyari. Standard naman is expressed in a per unit basis. It is predetermined at the start of the production. Meaning meron ka ng guideline basis eh. may benchmark ka na at before pa lang para doon mo ibangga yung actual mo. Doon mo iti-check kung na-follow mo ba yung guidelines na na-set. Si budget naman, sa kanya, this is expressed in total amounts. And it is already predetermined, kaya nga budget eh, budget. Predetermined at the start of production. So, kay standard, per unit siya. Kay budget, per uh, total amounts siya. So, accounting for standard costing. So, paano to? Now, established standards. The criteria in establishing standards for production is appropriateness. Ano yung naaangkop? Oo. Oo. Ano yung naangkop para sa car production? Ano yung naaangkop para sa ice cream production? Tingnan mo. I-check mo. Make sure that it is appropriate to the production at hand. Next is attainability. Make sure na yung standard na sinet mo, achievable, possible. Oo, hindi yung impossible na... Uh, hindi yung impossible ganyan. Makarating sa buwan, yung mga ganun ah makarating sa buwan. Hindi mga impossible na 100% 100% acceptability. Hindi ganun. Make sure na it is possible, it is achievable, it is attainable. Now, make a standard cost sheet or the standard cost card. Para doon, it shows full details of the standard cost of each product. Meron, meron kang guideline basis, may copy ka kung ano yung dapat na mangyari. Ano yung benchmark mo. Pangalawa, 
meron ka ng ano, sta- meron ka ng nagawang standard na isulat mo na siya, may copy ka na. Next na gagawin mo is the comparison and, al- and analysis of the standard cost and actual cost. Yan na, variance analysis na. Meron ka na ano eh, meron ka ng standard tapos nangyari ng actual mo. So, ibangga mo na sila. Check mo kung pareho sila or kung may variance, kung may difference. Kung may variance, ah, check mo. Ayusin mo yung variance. And record the entries. Ngayon, ito na. Alala nyo, yung direct material variance, yung direct labor variance. Now, para sa ikabubuti ng buhay nyo, ito yan, no? O, ito yung cheat code. Eh, cheat code yung note pagdating sa variance. So, ito sa direct material variance. So, price variance, the difference between actual cost of materials purchase and expected cost of this actual purchase. So, may purchase ka. O, may purchase ka. Ngayon, ito yung naset mong standard para sa amount or cost ng purchase na yun. Pero, nung nabili mo na siya, siyempre, may actual cost ka na. So, ang nangyari dyan, standard cost per unit quantity times the actual quantity. Ito yan, o. Oh. Si price variance tawag dyan. Oo. Kita nyo, itong si AP, actual purchase yan, times the AR, actual rate, ibig sabihin yung actual cost, minus the difference sa uh, minus, uh, multiply mo kayo, no? Actual purchase and yung standard rate, yung standard cost. So, tanong ko sa inyo, kapag positive yan, anong meaning? Kapag positive o kasi minus yung lumabas eh. Kapag positive yung lumabas kay price variance, anong meaning yan? Ibig sabihin, mas mataas yung nagastos mo as compared sa kung ano yung standard, kung ano yung inexpect mo. So kapag ano yung nangyari, unfavorable yun sa'yo. O di ba? Unfavorable yun sa'yo. Ngayon, kapag negative to dito, ibig sabihin, mas mataas. Oo. Mas mataas yung standard rate mo as compared sa actual na nagastos mo, big sabihin nun, nakatipid ka. It is favorable to. Yung in-expect mo, mas mataas yung presyo. Pero yung actual na nangyari, mas mababa pala. So, favorable yun sa'yo. Nakatipid ka sa price variance mo. So, ganun yun. Di ba? Lagyan nyo ng analysis. Kaya nga variance analysis ang tawag dyan. Ito naman, quantity variance. The difference between the expected cost from the actual purchase and the standard cost expected from the actual unit. So, yung standard cost per quantity times standard quantity. So, ito, kita nyo dito, ito, ito pwede mo ito i-combine eh. Gawin mong ganito para mas simple. Pero ito na, uh, hindi ko kina-combine dito, na-combine ko. So, as you can see here, ang kino-compare dito is yung, meron kang standard rate quantity. Kasi dito ang tinitingnan mo is yung price eh. Kay quant- price variance, kaya price variance. Dito naman kay quantity variance, tinitingnan mo yung quantity. So, ito, actual purchase versus the standard purchase times the standard rate. Kasi, quantity ang tinitingnan natin dito. Diba? So, as you can see, kapag positive to, ibig sabihin, mas malami yung nabili mo as compared sa kung ano yung dapat mo lang bilhin. So, that is favorable to you. Pero kapag negative to, ibig sabihin, ito yung in-expect mong mabili pero yung actual is mas konti. That is unfavorable to you. Yeah, again, lagi mo ng analysis. Ngayon naman, kay direct labor variance, so labor ang pag-usapan natin dito. So, labor rate, so yung rate, yung gastos, difference between the actual cost of the direct labor incurred and the expected direct labor cost from the actual R. So, standard rate per R times the actual R. So, dito naman, titingnan natin yung labor rate, yung cost mismo. So, ito, actual R times the actual rate, yung actual cost mo, R. Ito naman, minus the actual R times the standard rate. No, kapag positive to, ang lalabas dito sa solve nyo, big sabihin, mas mataas yung nagastos mo as compared sa kung ano yung naset mong standard. Of course. So, pag ganun, unfavorable yan sa'yo. Pero kapag nag-negative to, ibig sabihin, yung actual na nagastos mo for the labor is mas mababa as compared sa kung ano yung naset mo. Nakatipid ka. Favorable yun sa'yo. Dito naman sa labor efficiency. Labor efficiency variance talks about the difference between the expected direct labor cost and the di- standard direct labor cost given the actual 
units. So, standard rate per hour times standard hours. So, ito, ganito yan. Same rin, ah, na shortcut ko rin, labor efficiency. Sa labor efficiency ba yan, sitting na dito, gano'ng kagaling? Oo, yung performance ng labor mo. Kasi pag papucho-pucho yan, eh di mas magastos yan sa company. Pero kapag expert yan, efficient sa trabaho niya, kung magaling magtrabaho, eh di mas nakakatipid yung company kasi mas naging maayos yung trabaho. So in that case, kapag pa yung actual hours mo, mas mataas kung ano lang yung standard hours na naset mo, ibig sabihin, mas tumagal magtrabaho yung laborer mo. Kasi baka hindi magaling eh, or pucho-pucho yung trabaho niyo. So mas natagalan siya. Mas mataas yung actual R compared sa standard R. So, kapag gano'n yung nangyari, positive yun, unfavorable sa'yo. Kasi mas natagalan sa pagtitrabaho yung laborer mo. Pero kapag negative yung lalabas dito, ibig sabihin, mas mababa yung actual R sa standard R. Ibig sabihin, magaling, efficient yung laborer mo. Na ito yung sinet mong standard R's para magtrabaho sila, pero na mas mabilis yung naging trabaho nila. So, negative yun, favorable yun sa company mo. Yan, lagyan nyo ng analysis. Ngayon, to naman. Meron tayong, to na yung mas nagiging complicated eh. Overhead variances. Tapos meron tayong ways yan. Yung four-way perspective, yung three-way, two-way, and one-way. Sa four-way perspective, meron tayong variable spending, variable efficiency, fixed spending, budget variance, and volume capacity variance. So, ito sila oh. Don't worry. Sagot tayo nyan. Four-way variance. So, sa variable spending variance, the difference between the actual variable overhead, kasi overhead pinag-usapan natin ito eh. Kasi dito, di ba, up, di ba, tatlo yan? Direct material, direct labor, and the overhead. So, ito, ito si direct material, direct labor, dito naman tiki overhead. So, four-way perspective tayo. Variable spending variance, the difference between the actual variable overhead and the expected variable overhead at actual hours. So, standard variable overhead per hour time. Tingnan nyo din dito. O, oh, variable spending. So, basically, yung actual variable overhead mo, pag naging positive yan dito, ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung nagastos mo. Variable spending yan eh. Ibig sabihin, unfavorable yan sa'yo. Kasi, binangga mo yung sa actual hours eh. O, oh, oh, yung variable overhead mo, mas mataas as compared sa kung ano yung naset mong standard, eh di mas mahal yung magagastos mo dyan. So, pag positive yan dito, unfavorable siya. Pero pag nag-negative yan, ibig sabihin yung standard variable overhead mo, rate mo, mas mababa kung sa actual. So, pag minumultiply mo yan sa actual overhead, o ba, negative lalabas yan, ibig sabihin mas nakatipid ka. O, favorable yun sa'yo. Sa variable efficiency naman, o, efficiency yung pinag-usapan. Ibig sabihin yung manner of work, kung gano'ng ka-efficient, kung gano'ng kagaling. This is the difference between the expected variable overhead at actual hours and the standard variable overhead based on the actual units, yung standard VOH per hour times the standard hours. So, ito naman yan siya. Oh. Titingnan dito, variable efficiency. Oh. Same yung ano dito, same yung, same yung analysis. Ito yung actual hours mo, ito yung standard hours mo, multiply mo sa standard variable overhead rate kung magkano yung gagastusin per unit or per hour in this case. So, pag, mas, pag nag-positive to, ibig sabihin, mas mataas yung actual R na it took you to produce the product compared sa kung ano yung standard mo. Aba, Diyos ko, hindi efficient yung labor mo o yung variable mo dyan. Mas, mas natagalan ka compared sa kung gaano lang kailangan katagal yan. So, unfavorable lang sa'yo. E kapag nag-negative yan, ibig sabihin, mas konti yung R's na ginugol as compared sa kung ano yung standard sana, ibig sabihin, napabilis yung trabaho. O, di ba? Negative ang lalabas dyan. Favorable yun sa'yo. Na mas mabilis yung naging trabaho. O, di ba? Ngayon naman, fixed spending. Difference between the actual fixed overhead and the budgeted of fixed overhead. So, yung actual fixed overhead mo, ibig sabihin, na-incur na yan eh. Tapos yung budgeted mo, o, oh, pag nag-positive to, ibig sabihin, mas malaki na gastos mo. Pero kapag negative to, ibig sabihin, within the budget, yung gastos mo sa fixed overhead. O, fixed spending. O, yan, ganun lang yan. Volume capacity naman. Difference between the budgeted fixed overhead and the standard fixed overhead. Standard FOH per hour times standard R. So, ito naman. Pinag-usapan dito yung uh, budgeted fixed overhead and yung standard fixed overhead. So, kung positive to, ibig sabihin, mas mataas yung budgeted. 
as compared sa standard. Parang nakatipid kayo kasi within the budget. Pero pag nag-negative yan, aba, bisto yun, mas mataas yung nag-assess mo, unfavorable yun. Ito naman sa three-way variance. Kinombine lang, oh, spending, efficiency, and volume capacity. Kinombine lang si variable spending at si fixed spending. Oo. Ito naman kaya, no, pagdating kay two-way perspective, two-way variance, ang nangyari dyan, Ah, uh, tag dito, controllable and the non-controllable. So dito kay controllable, yung variable spending kinombine kay fixed spending, kinombine kay variable efficiency. Oh, controllable yan sila ng company, di ba? Discuss sa ting controllable kanina. Yung non-controllable part to is the volume capacity itong sa baba. O yan. Yan yung sa way we way variance natin. Kinocombine lang yan. From 4-way, naging 3-way, kinombine mo lang yung mga spending. Mm -mm. Spending variance na sila. Pagating ng 2-way, kinombine mo yung tatlong to. Kasi controllable sila. Yung non-controllable, separate naman siya. And with that, kung i-combine mo to sila, yun na yung total overhead variance mo. O yan. Lagi mo Kaya, lagi mo talaga ng analysis yan. Ngayon, ito yung mas nagpapahirap pa sa variances natin, yung special variance, yung mix and yield. Sa mix variance happens when the actual mix of the quantity used for production is not in the same proportion as to the standard mix based on the standard cost sheet. Yung sa yield variance happens when the expected uh, ratio of standard input to output is not the same as the actual ratio. Don't worry, meron tayong ano dyan, to For the, ito, yung... Notes ko to dati. So, solve nyo lang to. Dito, uh, dito lang yung ano, mix and yield variance. Yan lang yan. And, solving na rin for the four-way, three-way variance. So, yan. Follow nyo lang yan. Sasama ko lang yan sa pag-post ko. Ngayon, let's go to the causes of variances. O, sa analysis of variances. Ngayon, di ba, kasi ang variances as we have said, is the difference between the standard and the actual na nangyari. So, ano yung naging causes niyan? Una, inappropriate standard. Paano yan? Yung meron tayong incorrect or out-of-date standards could have been used which will not reflect current conditions. Ibig sabihin, mali yung nagamit mong standard. Mali yung nagamit mong bench, benchmark. Yung guidelines mo mali. Baka luma na, out-of-date or inappropriate ba? Kasi diba sabi natin, pag magagamit ka ng standard, it must be appropriate, it must be attainable. O dito in this case, baka unappropriate siya. So for example, a material price variance may have been wrong if it is an old price which was used or the wrong type of material was price. So yan, inappropriate standard yan. Second cause ng variances is the inaccurate recording of actual costs. So for example, if timesheet are filled incorrectly, this may lead to variances. Mali pala yung na-record nyo, yung error nyo on your part. Next is random events. Examples include unusual adverse weather, conditions, and a flu epidemic. Oh, eh. Wow. So, ito. Last time pa to. So, na-predict. Na oh, flu epidemic. This may cause additional unforeseen costs. La Pangapat, operational operating inefficiency. So, dito, ang biniblame na, if the variance is not caused by inappropriate standards, inaccurate recordings, or random events, then yung problema na mismo is nasa operations ng company. Yung operations ng company is inefficient, hindi naangkop, hindi proper. So the operating efficiency may be due to controllable or uncontrollable factors. So yan o. Oh. So check mo muna, baka mali lang yung standard nyo, baka um, nag-error lang kayo sa recording, or baka may, may mga random events outside the, ano, the company. Outside the influence ng company, pag wala yung mali dyan, o ba, baka sa mismong operations na yung mali. So, if sa mismong operations na yung mali, ayusin nyo. So, factors to be considered when a variance should be investigated. So, may nakita ka ng variance, i-investigate mo ba? Depende. Ito yung mga factors na kailangan mong i-consider. Yung materiality. Di ba? Ulitin natin, yung materiality is basically how influential how relevant is that specific information to the company? 
which is very subjective depending on the circumstances. Like for example, yung 1 million loss sa isang multi-billion dollar company, baka imaterialan sa kanila. Kasi multi-billion sila, 1 million lang yan. Packet change lang yan sa kanila. E pakapag yung sa isang karinderya, there's a 1,000 peso loss. Aba, karinderya yung kapatid. Yung 1,000 peso, malaking bagay na sa kanila. So for the karinderya, yung 1,000 peso, it is material. Importante yan sa kanila. So yan ha, materiality. Depende yan sa facts and circumstances. Depende sa company. So in this case, materiality. A standard cost is really only an average expected cost and is not a rigid specification. Kasi depende yan, very subjective yan. Small variations other side of this average are therefore bound to occur. But if you can still remember yung, ano, yung deviation nyo sa statistics, di ba? yung deviation. Now, the problem is to decide whether a variation from standard from the standard should be considered significant and worthy of investigation. Tolerance limits can be set and only variances which exceed such limits would require investigating. Ito na yung materiality concept, yung ma, uh, point of materiality, yung naalala sa auditing nyo. Now, controllability. Some types of variances may not be controllable even once their cause is discovered. Like for example, yung pandemic, controllable ba yan yung pandemic? Hindi, oh. Yung mga random events, mga welga. Mga, tawag ito, welga, strike nasa, within the company. Oh, that will cause variances. So, tingnan mo if it is controllable. For one, if there is a general worldwide increase in the price of the raw materials, there is nothing that can be done. Oh, like yung, ano, yung rare earth metals. That is concentrated yung ano niya, yung production niya sa China. O, so, if there's an increase in China, wala kang, and your company's produce is using rare earth minerals, rare, rare earth metals sa production mo, wala kang choice kasi wala kang ibang mapagbibilhan. So, there's nothing that can be done internally to control the effect of this increase. However, if a central decision is made to award all employees a 10% increase in salary, staff cost in Division A will increase by this amount and the variance is not controllable by Division A's manager. Uncontrollable variances calls for a change in the plan, not an investigation into the past. Another, another factor to be considered kung mag investiga ka ba is the type of standard being used. Oo. Kapag the efficiency variance reported in any control period, whether for materials or labor, will depend on the efficiency level. Set. If, for example, an ideal standard is used, variances will always be adver adverse. So, kapag dito sa letter B, a similar problem arises if average price, kasi dito tinitingnan natin is efficiency eh. Dito naman sa letter B, price ang tinitingnan natin. If average price levels are used as standards, if inflation exists, favorable price variances are likely to be reported at the beginning of a period to be offset by adverse price variances later in the period as inflation pushes prices up. So, sa letter A, efficiency ang tinitingnan. Tingnan mo kung anong klase ng variance yan. Efficiency ba yan? Ibig sabihin, the manner of conduct, paano nila ginagawang operation, or sa price mismo, magkano? Amount. Now, pangapat is interdependence between variances. Quite possibly, individual variances should be should not be looked at in isolation. One variance might be interrelated with another and much of it might have occurred only because the other interrelated variances occurred to. We will investigate this issue further in a moment. And lastly, cause of investigation. The cause of investigation should be weighted against the benefits of correcting the cause of a variance. Ito yung tawag natin cost-benefit analysis. Di ba? Cost-benefit. If yung benefits na gagawin mo in entering into that process is greater than the cost that you are going to incur in entering into that process, then okay, get that. Pero kapag mas mataas yung cost sa benefit na marireceive mo, if you're going to do that, then magdalawang isip ka. Huwag mo lang tanggapin. Mm. So yan, that is the end of this updated lecture video. So yung mga follow-up lecture videos natin, in this topic, yung mga ginawa ko last semester, last school year. So with that, and uh, mga weekend siguro, ipopost ko na yung quizignment natin. O, oh, para magawa nyo na. Panoorin nyo itong video, mga 2 to 3 weeks, long quiz tayo. And deadline ng ating quizignment. With that, good night. Love you. Next video na. Love you.